Playing podcast. My name's Rob Howard. It's just me this time. Uh, couldn't make it work. Had nightmare with travel and um, couldn't get the other guys on the call. So uh, yeah, I've, to be honest, I've had a pretty dry couple of weeks as far as gaming goes. I mean, not that I haven't been gaming. Uh, I've been persistently get, making my way through Skyrim and uh, <laughs> making a bit of headway in that. Uh, finally. Uh, Trying try to just basically do uh, all the quests that sort of make sense to do geographically. That's kind of how I play that game. Um, but I've, yeah, I've done another, must have done another 10 or 15 hours uh, in it this year. Um, who am I kidding? I'm never going to finish that game. But it'd be nice to finally do it sometime. Um, so yeah, apart from that, uh, I've been playing a bit more Yakuza. Done another chapter of that. Uh, continues to be interesting. Although, I don't know, some, some of the boss fights can be it can be i don't know it's as much of a brawler as it is an rpg so you know even though using reflexes is cool and you can play it that way i think it it kind of feels as though if you've got the right stance if you're in the right stance um then you can win you know uh which is cool you know because i'm not I don't know, I don't quite have the reflexes for those games I used to, so using a bit of strategy seems to pay off equally well. But yeah, other than that, it is very much a read the subtitles, cutscene, cutscene, cutscene. Um, I feel like I'm only really playing the game about a third of the time that it's on. Um, It's very, very narrative heavy. But yeah, I'm enjoying it and uh, looking forward to what they do with the series after this. So yeah... um, uh, what else? Uh, oh yeah, I made a bit more headway with Dishonored 2, which, um, it's not blowing my mind like I thought it might. Um, I probably had more fun with Deus Ex last year, but it does look incredible. I mean, conceptually, the way it looks, it's, it's fantastic. Um, but yeah, new stuff. Uh, well, um, I've kind of not been playing much VR. Uh, although I have tried, you know, I I bought this equipment. I'm not as much of an advocate as Patrick was, but I spent the money on the gear, so, you know, I want to use it. But, yeah, I tried a couple of things. The first one I tried was I Expect You to Die, which kind of came with the bundle I got uh, around the time of the touch controllers being released. Um, so Expect You to Die is kind of... Uh, it's got a fantastic intro. Um, really hooked me in straight away. But this is a, uh, it's a seated experience. So I thought, oh, okay, I'm, I haven't got much room, so I'll be okay there. So it's a touch game, but it's a seated experience. Unfortunately, what that means is when I'm sat down and I'm looking at things at desk level in front of me, um, the virtual desk is slightly higher than mine. So when I go to pick up something, I'm sort of, I don't know what's happening exactly, but I'm I'm losing uh, I'm losing tracking, or I'm putting I'm putting my controllers into my desk, and it's just not very good at all. But I mean, it looks like a cool game where you. I think the idea is that you're kind of in various precarious near death situations, and you have to kind of interact with what's around you to try and figure out the puzzle of how to escape. That's the idea. That's that's what what the pitch is. Um, but yeah, I just can't play it. I've just not got enough room. It's really frustrating. So I gave up with that. Um, not entirely, you know. When I get more time, I'm going to revisit all of this stuff again. Um, but yeah, right now I just can't do it. So the next one I tried is another kind of fairly stationary experience called Please Don't Touch Anything. Uh, so I tried that, and this one's a standing game. So absolutely fine had free enough range of movement wasn't losing connection apart from when i was turning around which is another thing that i could go into um yeah but um 
Yeah, so in this one, you're kind of in a room, there's a big button in front of you, and uh, you very quickly get a black light that allows you to sort of look at little clues around you, and you can teleport to sort of move around this little room. Um, I'm sure you probably wouldn't need to if you actually had enough space. Unfortunately, I don't. Um, But yeah, this is the thing I just keep running into with all these Oculus games, especially now I've got the touch. They all, while it's not a true room scale experience, and you've only got that 180 kind of field of tracking, they do all kind of expect you to have a room scale amount of space. So, yeah, I've not been playing very much VR, really. I've, I've just been getting annoyed. And not only that, but I'm, you know, I have quite a long work week, and the last thing I want to do after looking at screens all day is kind of attach them to my face. So, yeah, kind of been bit sort of down on VR lately um, and just really enjoying the stuff that's on PS4 really to be honest and there's a whole lot coming out Uh, the reviews have just come out for Horizon Zero Dawn cannot wait to play that game I've pre-ordered it the reviews are out I think it's a done deal many people are saying game of the year already (laughs) so yeah really really looking forward to that um so yeah that's kind of all i've been playing really oh i did play a little bit of bloodborne um uh, only a little bit and kind of after the pub sort of sharing the controller with my housemate sort of thing but yeah i was really quite surprised because i've not really played much of the dark souls games and i was really quite surprised at how the, how brutal they are at like introducing you to the mechanics like they just want to kill you uh and then you end up in this sort of limbo zone where i guess is where you sort of go to sort of upgrade yourself and buy stuff and things but yeah, you. I mean, we totally missed the weapons there that are on the floor. So we would just. My housemate was just trying to go back, like go back into where you get killed, trying to kill this thing with his fists. That's never going to happen. But eventually, I had a go, and I found the axe and the gun, and went in, and I was like, okay, now we're cooking on gas. Um, but it's a lovely looking game, and I'm I'm so pining to get into these games. But I don't know what it is. It's like they just feel like a colossal time an emotional investment um and i will i am going to do it this year you know i really want to play neo i really think neo is my way in being from team ninja who made ninja gaiden which was the game that kind of i've always considered the the hard difficult game of my life um so yeah maybe i'll do that um yeah, I'm not going to go on too long because I'm just on my own and I'm going to run out of steam. <laughs> um, I did see a couple of things, though, that look quite cool. Uh, namely, uh, The Bard's Tale, which is like a Kickstarter game, Bard's Tale 4. And uh, they showed off like a demo of the combat. And uh, yeah, this is a Kickstarter game, uh, which was fully funded, I assume. Uh, But it's really interesting because it's got like this sort of uh, really nice sort of 3D engine, lovely lighting effects. But it's also a very old school game in that you're like, it's kind of got that dungeon master thing where you're like, you have a party um, that is like represented in the sort of interface in front of you. So you're sort of going around these sort of environments in real time. And but then you'll get into combat and it and it and it's it becomes like a turn-based game. So all of a sudden, like, the character portraits are sort of... Uh, they sort of turn around to face the enemies in front of you. And there's, like, a grid kind of in front of you as well. Um, so, you know, uh, movement uh, has 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 an, uh, an effect and, uh, and sort of area effect and all those sort of things come into play. So I'm really sort of intrigued in how, like, a... Uh, sort of what looks what you'd normally associate with a sort of top down party based game uh how that sort of works in first person um i i think it could be really cool it looks like they've really thought about how to make this work and um like there seems to be like a level of drama in the combat as well uh which you normally when you've got that kind of over uh overhead view i guess you're kind of limited in what you can do there um it just kind of makes it a bit more kind of up close and personal, despite it being uh, clearly based on more uh, strategic uh, entries in the genre. So yeah, uh, that looks really cool. There's, I'll, I'll put a link to, in the show notes for that. Um, and I guess the other kind of big piece of news that, that kind of piqued my interest was um, that they're actually opening E3 to the public this year. Now, like part of me sort of loves the idea of going to E3, 
a lot of people I've heard in the press have just said it's so not worth doing because uh, apparently like a lot of what goes on at E3 is behind closed doors anyway so unless you can uh, get that kind of access it's hardly worth ponying up the like $250 or 200 quid it is to get a, a regular ticket so yeah I don't think that's for me <laughs> I think I'll leave it to the pros and do what I usually do and do a 24 hour marathon on YouTube instead <laughs> in the comfort of my own home so yeah um that's it as far as gaming goes i haven't really got a lot else to say i'm I've, i think i'm gonna have to park yakuza and dishonored as soon as horizon comes out that's out next week so i cannot wait for that to come out um and yeah i guess that'll do uh yeah we'll be back hopefully with uh a few more of us talking about what we've been playing i know ian's been playing a lot of uh the new Conan Exile so I was really really hoping that he would be on because I can't wait to hear what he has to say about that I've seen some of the uh, videos that he's put up on YouTube uh, and it does look quite hilarious indeed so yeah um, that's all folks see you next time this has been the Not Playing Podcast in partnership with notlistening.co.uk where you can also hear myself, Marcus and Ian talk about movies and TV on the Not Watching Podcast and Adam Ash and Will talk about all manner of funny things on the Not Listening Podcast. You can email us at notplayingpodcast at gmail.com or you can tweet at or follow us on Twitter at notplayingpod. You can find the show notes for this show at notlistening.co.uk and if you're listening to us on iTunes then please do give us a review. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for listening. See ya. Dripper with no food here. My friend, I'm in, but you agree, cause I suck. You suck. I suck at-